Okay, I'm going to hit start so we don't get uh, interrupted rudely by the intro. So, what happened last time? Well, I got to the credits. Right? I went through the credits. And um, I got to what seemed to be kind of like an after credit scene. And... The scene was kind of long for an after credit scene. It was, in fact, several scenes. And it ended somewhat abruptly, right? Where we had two things happening. One is Inebushi Keiko, which I assume that it is indeed Inebushi Keiko and not Hotori Suzukaje, I'm getting the first and last names mixed up, right? Keiko, if I do it like an American would, it would be Keiko Inabushi, right? And then Hotori Suzukaje. So, Keiko, or assuming it's actually Keiko, is about to murder one of the babies, which she foreshadows with the end of the lyrics to the Kagome song, which I don't remember exactly what it is, but I know it's something dark, right? So she's about to commit this murder. And you observe this as Kukuro. And then you go back to Satoru, and Lin points at Satoru and says, You're not Satoru. And it just cuts off there with the message that you typically get if you hit a bad ending. Or not necessarily a bad ending, but an ending that is not the golden ending in an Infinity Game, which is the story can still continues because you're still stuck in the infinite loop. Which... I get it. That's kind of contradictory, right? That's kind of confusing, right? On one hand, I got the credits. And I'm in an after credits scene. And I never heard of a visual novel that, like, has these credits. And then it hits a, like, it stops after the credits. An after credits scene. You get, like, an after credits scene bad ending. Or incomplete ending. Um, but you only get that message in an Infinity Game if you get an incomplete ending. If it's not the golden ending. So, like, is this the golden ending question? I mean, I can see the game ending on that. That is something that they make sense for the game to end on. I know some people would disagree with me on that. They go like, what? But I, it actually makes sense. It's like, it's like kind of like an eyebrow wiggle. It's like a little eyebrow raise at the, re at the reader. It's like, you get it? <laughs> yeah, you get it? And it just kind of ends on that anticipation that he's about to be murdered right after the game ends. Which is a good way to end something, right? But... But that, that message that you're still in the infinite loop. So I was, so once I got to that point, and in uh, last recording I kept going and like thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the, start the exhaustiveness, right? Um, I'm going to get all of the scenes to 100% and look at every single line of dialogue in the entire game and then I'll be done, right? I managed actually to get like heaven is here, the Alpha and the Omega fall down in the bosom of motherhood. Um, those ones to a hundred percent last time. In other words, I got through like the whole like intro part before the the, the route split um, to a hundred percent. Dropped a save where I can pick up you know on the closed off structure, um, keep going. Um, uh, is there a scene where we don't have any of it in it? Yeah, we do. We have some scenes that are completely and utterly missing, right? Um, like scenes is... So that's... Uh, you know, that, that kind of means something, right? I just have big font scenes. These are uh, Satoru scenes, but the small font scenes are uh, Kokoro scenes. But looking at the, the clear list... You'll notice that um, this is the last scene. These, these scenes are like the, uh, the after credit stuff, right? And they're all at 100%. And this is the end of the list. It doesn't go past 154. So either there's a clever reordering going on in the scenes. The scene list is intentionally incomplete to mess with the reader. Or the scene list indicates they got to the real ending. 
And uh, let's go back to uh, the endings list. The ending that I got... is... Actually, it's the top, isn't it? No, it's the middle. Yeah, Satoru chapter good end. Satoru chapter epilogue. That implies that the end, right? Like, it wouldn't be called epilogue if, you know, it wasn't the end, right? So, although this does have more things listed here. Uh, I assume these are like bad endings for Satoru. Um, that I skipped because I managed to dodge them because I'm good at skipping good endings. Um, but there's something that still kind of bothered me and made me think that, no, I hadn't actually got the end. It has to do with, um, like, the nature of the end, right? Like, I thought that maybe there'd be a way to get around it. So, the query at the end where it cuts off is, you're not Satoru, right? And I figured out the answer to that. At the time, I thought so I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, in um, uh, Inamoto and Satoru switch bodies." So, but then I thought, like, for some reason, the person we were playing as the whole time was actually not Satoru; it was Inamoto. I just thought he was Satoru because of some sort of memory hijinks. And then I realized that's what I think. I last recording I said, but that's kind of nonsense. What was actually happening, as far as I can interpret, is the body that we identified as Inamoto through most of the game with the, with the sunglasses and like the black hair. That was the original body of Satoru. And the person that Lynn dated was indeed Satoru. It was that body, right? So she dated Satoru and she dated the Satoru that had that body. Um, so the person that you talk to in the white room that has that body that we identified as Inamoto is calling you scum. That's Satoru, right? He's the person who likes milk in his coffee, right? Whereas... Whereas the person that's in the body where identify as Satoru with the yellow hair, that is in a... that stabbed the... Sat, stabbed the person we're playing as, Satoru in quotes, to death wasn't actually Satoru stabbing his future self. That was Inamoto stabbing future Satoru in his Inamo in Inamoto's body. So when the, the person introducing himself to Lin as Satoru at the end of the game is in the body that's, that either Lin doesn't know or Lin would have thought as the body of Inamoto. And they switch before the whole story, before the whole 2012 incident even happens. Uh, they should be switched because Satoru looks down at his ID card and says, that's my name, Satoru. I forgot what his last name is. Um, I never really liked my name that much. He's identifying himself as indeed Satoru when he's walking up to the top of the clock tower. So... Some, at some point between the halfway, like in August, and, um, and January 2012, they switched bodies for some reason. And it might have to do with how they're trying to avoid in a mo uh, Satoru getting murdered, but it's not actually Satoru that gets murdered. It's Inamoto that gets murdered in Satoru's old body. They don't understand that. Um, they switch, but they switch for some reason. So that's what Lin is talking about at the end. Well, how we learned that was from a bad ending, right? I went, I went into that uh, middle room, that middle area, and went inside, went underneath that green manhole cover um, and got that information that they were actually switched. Um, which kind of raises, kind of suggests to me that I could go into that manhole cover after I've made the correct choices on the time intervals. And what that would do is I now go into that manhole cover with more information, right? Satoru from the past doesn't have to teach me about the relay point because he already figured that out on his own, right? 
Satoru from the past wouldn't have to talk to him about like the Alpha and Omega because Satoru would have already figured that out on his own. Um, so their conversation can go differently and the scene can be different. And that can reveal very, like, more directly to us, to Satoru, that he is not occupying his original body. He is occupying the original body of Inamoto. So, when Lin points at him and goes, you're not Satoru, it's not like, I don't understand. She, he now understands what she means. And the dialogue can continue. This is... Um, a mechanic that we don't really see in these early Uchikoshi games, like the Infinity series, it's something you see in these later ones. It's called a locked route, um, where you go down a route and you get to a point where it just stops you. And it says, you can't keep going down this route unless you do something in some other route and learn something. You have to get this other thing ending first before you can keep going down this route. They haven't done that in the Infinity series so far. Um, the closest thing they've done to doing to, do that, to doing that is like the Azumi Kurei route in Never 7 and the Coco route in Ever 17, where they don't give you the options that you can choose to go, they'll get you the right amount of points to get into a certain route until you've completed all of the other routes first, right? Um, with Azumi, they slowly start adding the options as you complete routes. With uh, Never 7, they suddenly give you two, give them to you all at once. So there's like a hidden route, but it's not like you go start, you can start going down the Coco route and you get to a certain point on the Coco route. It's like, oh, you can't keep going down the Coco route unless you finish the you good ending first. And it doesn't do that. It just doesn't give you the route at all. Um, but we might be seeing here the beginnings of the invention of the lock mechanic, which does appear in later games of similar genre and later games by this uh, does author and we might have hit a lock the problem with that theory is that again we've made all those seeds at the end of the scene list to 100% um, and it's an after credit scene which is weird now I have to confess that after, while I was thinking about that I thought about something that made something a spoiler which previously I didn't think was a spoiler. So I went on the uh, Infinity Series subreddit, and the reason why I was doing that was I was researching the availability of the ports and different fan translations for them for the last part of Ever 17, which I still have not recorded as of yet, right? Uh, this big, like, you know, list of things about ports and stuff of Ever 17 in the entire Infinity Series. And that's kind of dangerous because you can get spoilers for these things. And because these House of Cards puzzle piece plots, any sort of little thing is going to spoil a lot, potentially. But I went, took the risk and went on there to do my research. And there was one title to one post that someone, where someone like posted this question, which endings in Remember 11 are skippable? Now, I didn't think about that much at the time. I didn't think I got spoiled by something by seeing that, like, headline. I didn't read any of the subtext. I didn't, like, click on it. I didn't read it, like, you know, I didn't look at the preview text of what the guy wrote. You know, I just saw the top, the title, right, the title of the post. I was like, okay, this guy doesn't know. Like, he's, like, asking, like, for plot importance, which, you know, bad endings he should bother to trigger and which ones he should just not bother, Right. What I waste his time with. And, but then I thought, if I'm thinking about lock mechanics, then it might be that this guy knows about lock mechanics because from some other source, because he already got spoiled and he's someone who doesn't really care about spoilers that much. But he didn't know, he doesn't know which ones are the lock picks, like which ones unlock the golden ending. And he's actually asking that in different words. Maybe because he's trying to be a little bit, like, sly about spoilers in his topic, which he's not. But, um, and there's actually endings that are required, uh, bad endings that are required, and bad endings that are not, to even get to the golden ending. Well, if there was only one bad ending that was required to get to the golden ending, he might have phrased the question differently. He might have been, which bad ending is not skippable? Because he's looking more, like, 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 because if you ask which bad endings are skippable, you get, when you're looking for that information, it's a weird answer. It's like all but this one, right? You usually go for the smaller category. So, 
that suggests to me that if there's a lock mechanic going on here, that it actually requires several bad endings to trigger the lock. And then I thought, well, there was actually two cutoffs in this cutoff that I experienced, right? That seemed like a lock. One was you're not Satoru. The other one was the anticipated murder of the baby, right? And one was as Satoru and one was as Kokoro. So now maybe to unlock it past the slock, I need information about Satoru and his body swap with Inamoto. And I also need information of that would like allow me to Kokoro to somehow figure out that this is actually Kaiko. Which may have something sort of interact may something to do with some interaction with Kaiko we're supposed to have. So just doing that one bad ending may not work. It may not be a lock in the first place. So I got spoiled. I have to kind of spoil you too because you have to ever reveal what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking it because this is my let's play and the whole point of it is how I'm thinking and how I'm responding to this game. So, but for now I decided I'm going to put off trying to like exhaustively 100% complete everything and try to again be more focused and try to get the good ending, right? Try to just go for the gold and then once I'm done going for the gold and I've done producing everything anybody wanted to see, I have these like extra episodes where I'm trying to 100% everything. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to try my theory, even though it may not work, and um, try to load my save, where... Oh, try, yeah, symbolic is the save I want to load, right? And try to do, and do a certain bad ending, which I'll have to do anyway, so this isn't really cut into my time that much, where I figure everything out correctly in the security room, and then actually go in that manhole cover and mess myself up and see what I learn, right? So the criminal out to kill me is neither is the correct answer. Let me skip forward here. And then we pick the the two the 66 minute interval. So this one. Then I pick the 66 minute interval. So this one. Let it roll. Then I say there are three exchange points. Let it roll. It seems called a third area. Then I figure out where the middle point is and I have an idea about who the uh, person alpha is, right? Now I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna intentionally mess up. I opened it. Now, it's this is not skippable at this point, so that's interesting. The inside gleamed with white light. The inside was bright as day. I squinted from the overwhelming light. While shielding my eyes with one hand, I took a look inside the room. There wasn't even a shadow. No one was around. There was a ladder leading down from the round entrance. I went down it. And it closed behind you, right? Okay, so we're at apoptosis again. Interesting. With the great click creaking of hinges, the door closed. The inside was saturated with a bright white. It's letting me skip. Okay. Ah, oh, so now it's not skippable anymore. Let me with the backlog to get the context for this. I forgot how to do backlog on this. Is it H? No. Um, J? Yes, J. Okay. <laughs> every visual novel I play, like, it's a different key. Remember on every 17, it was scroll wheel. Someone was climbing down the ladder. The one who came down was Inamoto. At that moment, I was starting to chaos. Why? Why is Inamoto here? And then he goes, but, okay, so that's the same as last time, right? But, 
So he went through all the things where he's observing the white room and the black circle and all that stuff. But he reacts differently. So let's go. I understood instantly. Right, this is the past. The Inamoto here is the Inamoto of the past. But why would he need to come here? <sighs> Once he noticed I was there, shock registered on Inamoto's face. We glared at each other, neither moving a muscle. The one who finally broke the silence was him. Omaeva. You. Omaeva dareda. Who are you? Eh? Eh? Ka? Didn't you hear me? Which is kind of odd, because I don't know why he doesn't go, You're in a moto, aren't you? Because you're in his body. I mean... Omaeva dareda to kiiterunda. I asked you, who are you? Kotaero. Answer me. I didn't understand. Shouldn't Inamoto know who I am? Why doesn't he recognize me? Or maybe this past Inamoto just doesn't know me yet. Kotaero. Answer me. Inamoto repeated. Reluctantly, I decided to answer. Ore wa... I am... Ore no na wa... My name is... Yukido Satoru da. Yukido Satoru. Yukido is his last name, okay. No. Na... Nani? What? Inamoto panicked. No, it wasn't anything as simple as panic. It was a horrified dismay, as though the world was crumbling down around him. At his wit's end, staggering, he wrung a groan out of his convulsing throat. <laughs> what? 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 Yukido Satoru da to yu no ka? You scum, how dare you call yourself Yukido Satoru? And this is here, this person is Satoru, remember? So. So. Yeah. yeah. So. Ga... Do ka shita no ka? Is there anything wrong with that? Yes, you're embarrassing me in front of myself. <laughs> you're embarrassing me to myself. His eyes pierced me. In those eyes, I detected intense hatred and rage. Samanga. Yukido Satoru da to yu no de areba. If you say, you scum! If you say you are Yukido Satoru. <laughs> now I see. Saying this, Inamoto's face darkened. While tapping at his temples, he continued muttering. What a state of affairs. If scum like you could get in here. It's all ruined. Project is a failure. Even though I... Damn it! So stupid! I feel like throwing up! What are you saying? I, I can't understand you at all. But Inamoto continued without answering my question. Well, whatever. Though I say it failed, all this really means is that one possibility has collapsed. Let's see if it lets me skip this part. Yes, it does. Um. Oh. I was going to say I knew it. Um. This skips all the way through. Okay. Trying to figure out a way to skip this music and snow. Is there a way to... <laughs> Is 
Okay, I'll pause the encoding to get around this. Start recording again. Sure, I'll save my mess up. Okay, so that was a failure. So we'll just keep going. Let's do what I was doing. So, um, yes. Okay, so for some reason it's here. I will just skip forward from here. Okay, now. Okay. Now. Now, this is, um somewhat annoying in that I don't know how we're gonna how hard tedious is gonna be to check off all these possibilities because doing different checking different places in Sphere the first time you come to Sphere makes it so you get a different set of choices about what you can check on next time you come to Sphere. It kind of splits it between the two instances and it, you're gonna go through all three places anyway. So it doesn't change the plot which one you choose. It's just for grunt work. I don't know um but what, whatever. I'm going to go down the stairs now. Um, so. I open the door. It doesn't let me skip this. An ethereal girl. Apparently this place is being used as a storeroom. There are provisions, fuel, medical supplies, miscellaneous daily supplies, all sorts of equipment and so on, evenly spaced and neatly placed on the shelves. Now it's letting me skip. Uh, when it comes to rats, I, I'm going to say can handle them. And I keep skipping. Until you start talking to Keiko. Or actually is, is, is Hotori in this case. Right? And... Hotori, again, is acting kind of weird, but she goes, maybe if I'm in the wrong body, this person who's saying that they're Kokoro in Satoru's body. We don't know if she overheard the conversation between Kokoro and Yuni on the plane, or whether or not she just knows that Yuni's looking for someone named Kokoro. And so when, she, when Kokoro introduces herself as Kokoro in Satoru's body, she goes, oh, Yuni's looking for this person. Anyway, um, so that kind of checks off that uh, choice. Um, let's load that again. So, um, to load the closed off structure. Um, do the same choice again. Do go down the stairs. Skip. Now I'm going to say I can't handle rats. I really can't handle them. If I ran across one in a place like this, I'd probably faint right away. I made it my priority to get away from this place. Before I could finish climbing the cells, upstairs I felt someone's presence. Unless you skip, right? Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's do the third one. Um, this is so, this is so boring. I don't know who wants to watch this, but try leaving through the main entrance. Well, I went to see if I could get go out to, to the main entrance. The door didn't have a knob or any sort of handle attached to it. It must be an automatic. Okay, doesn't let me skip yet. It must be an automatic door, but a very peculiar one, unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's made out of some sort of metal, but that's all I can to make out about it. I wonder how thick it is. It seems to be so sturdy that a shell shot from a tank would have little chance of taking it down. I stood in front of the door. What spread out in front of me when I opened was an image of a hell in black and white. 
In the whirling plumes of snow, countless snowflakes were madly racing past each other. As I thought, the sparkling particles of light I had seen through the window earlier were indeed crystals of snow, but I had no idea what it was coming down into this hard. All that was reflected in my eyes were the countless white particles in the darkness between them. It was already impossible to see anything more than a few meters away. The harsh freezing wind felt as if it would blow through me. My cheeks and neck felt as if they were being cut by countless shards of glass. It became impossible to breathe. The chilly air was so intense that I could feel my lungs and trachea choking on it as it made its way through them. Notice I can't, I can't skip. I felt that I had stayed here for even three seconds more, I would surely die. I'm pretty sure that wasn't even an exaggeration. Panic stricken, I turned and started back toward the building. It was nice and warm inside. This was the kind of warmth that a human survive, human survive in. Phew. I breathed a sigh of relief. The thundering roar of the wind was so loud that I could, could, could be clearly heard even indoors. I hadn't noticed the sound of it until now, but what's probably been my, my mind had been preoccupied with other things. Anyway, I doubt anyone could be outside in this kind of weather. Except for the truly curious or adventurous, there is no way anyone would venture out into the middle of that snowstorm. Now that I caught my breath, I decided to explore the other parts of the facility. Hmm, maybe I should take a look downstairs next. I went to, to, down the staircase beside the kitchen. Oh, this toggles into downstairs. That's interesting. Okay. Now I can skip. But then again, the door leading outside should have made that obvious. Let me look at the backlog. Okay, right? It's the basement. It would mean the floor one was on was the first floor. Okay, so that's, that's something new there a little bit. I heard a sound like a groan coming from somewhere. A low mechanical- okay, then let's be skip again. I'm gonna say I can handle rats. Okay, I'm gonna stop skipping. Um... J. Um, in a bush she kept- so, what's she, he's she gonna say here? I forgot how this goes exactly. She introduces herself as Kokoro, and he's like, you're in a bushy, right? Keep going here. So the girl will turn to smile as a very natural, sincere smile. I thought it was safe to let my guard down a bit. Of course, not so far as to let her read me like a book. But after seeing such a gentle smile, there was really, there was really a little I could do. Although my reasoning was trying to, hard to build up a strong, impenetrable wall, my instinctive curiosity took the best of me. I was climbing over the protective wall and taking a step toward, forward into danger. Inabushi-san. Inabushi-san. Right, and right now, this is Kokoro in the body of Inabushi. And, um... Kokoro and, uh... No, Hoto Hotori in the body of Kaiko. And Hotori's body is now possess is currently possessed by an eighth-month gestated baby. Which... Is, and that baby is probably, like, wandered out into the snow, right? You're Inubushi Keiko-san, right? My voice quivered and gave away my nervousness. But she's not. She doesn't understand. The girl stayed silent. As if she didn't understand what I had just said. Right, because it's the wrong name. Inubushi-san, right? I asked the same question again, but the girl just tilted her head. Hey, it couldn't be a different person. Oh, it sure is. No, that's impossible. Yeah, it sure is possible. She looked exactly like the girl from the photo in the file. I... So, I've done as directly. Let me say, I'm going to do it. It's no use playing dumb. So, you're just playing dumb. I know what you did. I know about the incident at Awazuma. Even though your photo wasn't publicly released like most other criminals. I know what you did. How should I say this? Um... I know what you did. I know what you did. I know what you did. I have a certain report that was only released to parties directly involved with the incident. A friend lent it to me as a favor. Actually, I was doing that even legal. <laughs> but I was very curious about the details of the incident. And by now, I know everything there is to know about you. 
どんな環境で育ちこれまで何をしてきたのかも全部当然あなたに兄弟がいないことも知ってますだからとぼけても無駄なんです人違いなんてことはありえないもの There's no way in hell I can mistake you for anyone else. My words jumped out quickly, one after the other, tumbling and stumbling as my fear pushed them out of my mouth. I turned my attention to her face, looking like for a reaction. But Inabushi Keiko just kept looking at me with her mouth shut. She didn't even look the least bit flustered. I mean, she's flustered. <laughs> The door was, was to the right of the main entrance, the closest one to me at the moment. But interesting why this dialogue changed in response. I guess because you haven't gone in, the, they haven't examined the doors yet in this, because I didn't choose that, like in the, uh, make that choice. So that's why it gives me this extra dialogue here, or extra line. After a few moments, the girl jumped out of the doorway. Looking confused, she beckoned me over. <laughs> And did something happen? All right, and this happens. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of run with that spiel. Or not. Actually, I'm not. So. Um, you know, the close off structure is my latest one, right? Decided to. And then it's uh, try leaving through the main entrance is the one I chose. So I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with try leaving through the main entrance because that's like the most. And then um, can handle them. And then I'm going to save this one. An ethereal girl. And then just ask directly because I want to do the nice choice. Right. Here are obstacles in youth. Okay, put another save here. Say, so what's the context of this? Is something wrong? Uni asked in a delicate, de delicate voice. Let's say, don't say anything what happens. So there's no way for me to come up with a surefire comeback. What would it take for him to realize that I am Fuyu Kawakokuro? I couldn't quite make out Yuni's expression at the moment. Mm -hmm. no no. Well, it's nothing. It took all I had just to mutter that. Yuni tilted his head curiously. His nonchalant gesture made my chest tighten and my heart feel almost short, constricting bursts of pain. I couldn't endure any more of this. I couldn't stay here anymore. I turned my eyes away from Yuni and spoke. Well, then I'll be off now, all right? I'm sorry for barging in here so suddenly. But I was happy to see you. Leaving him with those words, I stood up. As I did, I saw something as good as a as mirror in front of me. I could see it through the curtains. Darkness reigned outside. So the beautifully polished glass had nothing to show but the reflections of the objects inside the room. Of course, the walls, the lighting, and the furniture were not the only things that could be seen there. My own appearance was faintly floating in it, painted hazily in the darkness. <laughs> eh? I thought that maybe I was hallucinating. I closed my eyes and opened them again, but what I first, what I first thought was an illusion didn't want to disappear from the slit glass surface. A cold sweat ran down my back. I wanted to scream, but something was stopping me. It felt as if something was stuck inside my throat. Panicking, I hastily tried to reaffirm what I had seen. I was wearing clothes I did not recognize at all. And it wasn't just my clothes that seemed alien to me. Then that lets me skip. Right. Now I guess wait till the next choice. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, insist that I'm Kokoro. Um as my, what I'm going to go with for my, like, through line, right? Um, so I'm going to go with, tell him I am Fuyukawa Kokoro.
Okay. Now, I'm going to put a save here. Okay, so this is called Liberation of Self. Okay. Now I'm going to do the one that I do, did do because I thought it was the wrong choice. Talk to the woman and see what happens. I tried talking to the woman. Uh, excuse me. No response came from her. She didn't even try to look at me. Remaining silent, she brought the cup of t cup to her lips. The steel cup, wrapped in her two hands, was rattling and shaking. It must have been from the cold. Excuse me, are you listening? I tried one more time, but yet again, got no response. It seemed that I was being ignored. I turned my face to the man and decided to ask a question. His hands were placed deep in the back pockets of his trousers, his head slightly bowed. With nothing else to do, I started talking. Right, I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to, because, um, well, I'm actually going to do the low here. So, if I do, if I do talk to the man, try talking to the man, excuse me. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to pick the most, more, more verbose option. So liberation of self. Um... Oops. Going to continue. Talk to the woman. Skip forward. Oh, it didn't. Let me skip this for some reason. Um, okay, so then I'm going to do a save here. And we're going to do Who Are You? Who are you? Hey, hey, have you forgotten about me already? He folded his arms, appearing frustrated. Didn't I tell you my name just now? Just now, what did he mean? I waited for him to continue. Are you sure you're feeling okay? What do you mean? Now it's letting me skip, right? I'm, go. I'm sorry, but can I ask you one more question? Your name. You said you had just told me a while ago, but... He sat down at the table across from me. His mouth was open and he was laughing. Just what's so funny, exactly? I didn't quite understand why I was laughing, but I didn't really mind it as his laugh didn't seem the least bit ill-intentioned. I guess it's no surprise, all things considered. It's actually pretty amazing that we're having somewhat of a normal conversation like this. From his jacket pocket, he took out his creased and crumpled pack of cigarettes, along with a silver lighter. He tapped a cigarette out of the pack and placed it in his mouth. He handled the lighter incredibly naturally, snapped it open with ease. After the crisp metallic sound faded, a red flame slow, softly flickered into being, carrying the flame close to the tip of the cigarette. Okay, I'm going to take that as my through line. Save here. Yes. Then I'm going to go title. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to make sure that I got all the things 100%. The closed off structure, I only have at 92. Okay. Um... That's interesting. Maybe something didn't save. Um, well, we're just going to go through on the... Uh, so try to see if we can figure out what that is. We're gonna, I'm going to do a through all the way on the going downstairs first thing. Um, 
Okay, continue. We're gonna load. We're gonna load in, uh... oh, it's in closed off structure. Yes, side two. Let's try to investigate the doors and see what, this is what I did the first time, right? Should go through all the way. Oh, okay. So then the second one you can do is try leaving through the main entrance here. Okay. I went to see if I could go through the main entrance. The doors didn't have a knob or any sort of handle attached to it. Okay. Must be an automatic door, but a very peculiar one unlike any seen before. It's made out of some sort of metal, but that's all I can say about it. I wonder how thick it is. Same thing, like, same dialogue, but it doesn't let me skip it. Okay, and then it throws through, right? Yeah. So I can't handle them. Okay, and it'll go through. I do ask directly. I'm just going to actually repeat my choices, because... It seemed like the going to all of them made sense. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay you get it now. If you check, choose check out one of the doors first, then you can go to the main entrance, and then you can go downstairs, and then it, that's like the best thing to do because it goes through all three. Um, tell you my Fuyukawa Kokoro. I did talk, try to talk to the woman. Who are you? Okay, so let's look at Jay here. Right, mine was completely void of memories from the strange dream with the grotesque script and frighteningly detailed scenery. Um, okay, I'm gonna choose the opposite one. I wanted to know why Uni was here. Why was Uni in a place like this? It bothered me, but well, it felt rather trifling and insignificant. He was safe, that was all that mattered now. With the end of the long hung nowhere in sight, the small doubt that had spread in the corner of my mind slowly faded away. I forgot everything, becoming intoxicated with his warmth as I continued to soak in the happiness of our reunion. I'm left-handed. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. And here's the problem. I didn't... Oh my goodness. Okay. B. You didn't redo that save. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Investigate the doors. And then, once you get through all of the doors, then you can go to the main entrance. That's how you do all three, right? Then once you do the main entrance, then you go downstairs, so I can handle them. Although I think that doesn't matter. Then don't be a jerk. That never, that's never good. Insist your Fuyukawa Kokoro because that gives more versions of the CG. So that's the correct one. At least I'm assuming.
And then talk to the woman because that's more verbose. Then who are you because that's more verbose. Then drop the save. And save it over top of this one. Yes. Okay. Now, there we go. Now, I want to remind myself what this was. Whoops. I guess I won't. And that makes more sense, though. Uh. Okay. J. J. Oh, I can't backlog if I'm in a new scene. When I use a pin, chopsticks, or scissors, I always hold them with my left hand. So I wear my watch on my non dominant right wrist. Okay. Gotten about everything. So it felt out of place. It's just feeling stuttered, but even though it's trifling matters, okay, interesting. It seems to not matter. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward. It doesn't let me, oh, okay. Cool. So, let's see here. Let's try talking to Uni. I talked to Uni. Hey, Uni. Hey, Uni. Yes. The four of us are the only ones here, right? So Uh, yeah, I guess. Then on the other pa Then on the other passengers, Uni's face darkened. The room had become shrouded in silence once again. Uni looked down for a second, then back up again, opening his mouth. You see, that's. I'll take it from here. Yogomi cut into the conversation. That's right. Yogomi took a, takes a puff off his cigarette. Actually, you mentioned it. There's something we have to talk about, Yukido san. Yukido? Did I hear him wrong? Right. And then it continues into the next choice, right? It just kind of goes. Um, I just gonna make sure it gets the next choice without. Um... This is the big exposition dump. Okay. We're gonna stop. Okay, so... I assume it's gonna be... Let's try... Talk to the woman wrapped in blankets. I tried speaking with the woman wrapped in the blankets. Um... Silence. Oh, can you hear me? There was no reason she wouldn't be able to hear me. I was simply being ignored again. She had been so thoroughly ignoring me that it began to feel as if she was doing it out of some sort of hostility towards me. Did I do something to leave her with a bad impression of me, perhaps? No, I don't remember doing anything like that. I just met her recently and we haven't even exchanged a single word. Or it was possible that she, just, that, that she was just that kind of person to begin with. It might be that she wasn't really a people person or something like that. With nothing else to do, I started to talk to, talking to Yomogi. Hey, Yomogi-san. 
ここにいるのはこの4人で全部ですよね。Four of us are the only ones here, right? ああ、そうだけど。Yeah, I think so. Why do you ask? それじゃあ、あの、Now, this is... 他の乗客の人たちは。So, on the other passengers, Emogi looked out the window and took a long draw from his cigarette. Slowly letting the smoke out, he wipes this white cloudy window. そうか。That's right. そういえば、まだ有機道さんには話してなかったね。Now that you mention it, there, I've yet to speak to you about it, Yukido san. Yukido? Did I hear him wrong? Okay. I'm just gonna take this as my through line. Whatever. It doesn't matter which one I choose, I suppose. So I'm gonna go through the exposition. Okay. Title, yes, save my system data. And then look at the clear list to make sure I'm not messing up. Okay, so 100% down to use personality development, the animus to the anima, escape reality, falling into autism, I haven't finished yet. Okay. Please, slightly lethargic. I don't eat it after all. I thought I'd try them out, but then I remember that we only have four days worth. We have to value it more. I put the biscuits back in the cardboard box. And I'll go through with that. Um, we only pulled out an aluminum pot with the box beside it. It seemed, uh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's a good through line. Talk about the newspaper. Got switched back. Now. All right, the cup breaking. Save. Oh, it's loading. Okay, oops. Save. There we go. Um, what was the backlog of this? Man reflected the mirror and made the exact same movements. The test I stuck out my tongue meant to say, and continuous laughter resounded in the air for a moment. Okay, ready to try getting angry. The man got angry and glared at me. It's a little scary. This can't be. I wanted to cry. The man reflected in the mirror gave a smile that looked almost tearful as well. A pathetic face. I became a guy. I was thinking, okay, okay, so try getting angry and try smiling. They're kind of the same. Okay, this, this goes right from here, right? I want to take, um, well, just keep. Uh, 
I want to take um. Probably smiling is my through line, even though that choice probably doesn't matter at all. Okay, so these are the only remaining places to check are two of the four doors in this room. As I face away from the main entrance, there are two inner rooms. I investigated the room to the left on the left hand side. Hotori didn't follow me. My gate slightly unsure, I walked in the direction of the living area. So what about this Hotori thing? Okay, so Hotori was gonna follow her, okay. Or him. So I'm sure I walked in the direction of the living area. Light in the room was already on. The structure of the room looked exactly the same as the two rooms I'd seen earlier. I didn't feel anyone's presence. The inside was silent. Several articles of woman's clothing have been left spread across the bed. They probably get wrinkled if they were left like that. It's a very private atmosphere somehow. In other words, the four rooms at the corners of the institution are for private use. That means that in this building, there are at least four private rooms. In each room, there's a single bed. The number of people in this institution can accommodate is four, if it is what it, what it means. The scale of the building itself is quite large, so it's surprising the number of people that accommodates is so few. Also, this institution doesn't seem to hold the presence of many people either. I haven't met anyone in Sphia besides those three. The other people involved with Sphia, the doctors and the nurses, for example, where were they and what are they doing? Perhaps the extra people, okay. We already read most of this. Unusual situation happening? I shook my head a little. I'm just going in circles. I left the room. Itsumi and Yuni were in the kitchen drinking tea. Hotori wasn't in the living area. She had disappeared through one of the four doors, the last remaining door. Or it could be possible that the room belonged to Hotori herself. Since I didn't have anywhere else to go, I decided to take a little peek. Casually, I followed after Hotori. Just as I expected, this room had the same layout as the other three. The only thing different in this room didn't have the feeling that it was being lived in. Also, that sheets on the bed were in disarray. There wasn't anything else. The top of the desk was bare, and there weren't any changes of clothes to be found. In the first place, there wasn't any human warmth. A cold, dreary atmosphere enfolded the room. What does Hotori Inabushi Keiko think while living in a ro this room of hers? Okay. And she goes crazy. Okay, I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to go to the title. Yes, save my system data. This is what I'm worried about. I, since I went through all the places in um, closed off structure, in collective symptoms, I have no fewer places to go, so I can't get all the text in collective symptoms. To get this weird interaction, it makes it hard to 100% everything, right? Um... Clear list. Right, so we got everything up to collective symptoms. Then we have only 94 because of what we did in, um, what's it called? Um, the closed off structure. So that means I have to... Load the closed off structure and do various things there. So, um, I have to do, go downstairs and through line that. Because that's like the smallest. So, I can't handle them. It's going to be annoying, isn't it? <laughs> told you this. So, I told, I told you no one was going to watch this. Ask directly. Yeah, and her being mute is not as a plot hint that she's not the actual Kaiko, or the, the Kaiko is not the actual Hotori, but it's like it prevents her from explaining her situation, right? 
And then just talk to Itsumi. They have to go through the whole exposition. He got to the exposition. Broken GPS. It was saying nonsense coordinates earlier because they were they were place swapped. Their GPS is not actually broken. And then I said I was going to do don't eat it after all. Newspaper. Then it gets torn up. It's torn up by Omega or Alpha or whatever. Try smiling. And here we are, collective symptoms finally. Okay. And then, uh, Save this one. I'm gonna take, take leave through the front entrance. Interest in anything that could be used as a handle. Okay, we already know how this know all this stuff. Skip, nope. In front of the main entrance, Otori was waiting. For some reason, she was following me around with small rabbits, rapids, ra rapid steps. I wonder what's up. Itsumi and Yuni were making tea while making idle chatter. It might have been because my body was being chilled, but I really wanted something warm to drink. Besides that, I wonder how those two can be talking in such a calm atmosphere. This place is an institution to keep the mentally ill in isolation, after all. A pair of them didn't seem to have any intention of stopping my aimless wandering. Not sure they might want to stop me at all, after all, but I can't be sure. Okay. Okay, so this is... This happens. Oh, Tori goes crazy. Okay. So I'm gonna... 
put a save for this too. Okay, now I'm going to go to the title. Yes, and we might have to see if that's good enough. We might have to do a third iteration to get 100% on that scene because of the awkward nature of how they how they organize this thing. Oh, okay, phew. Okay. So now I'm going to go to continue, load, and I'm gonna load this collective symptoms. Yes. I. Now, now, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to take them. And it does not take them. This was kind of the cool thing about the, orig like the, the original. It's like, when you go through this, you go, it's really rude and really mean and not good practice to take medicine when you're in somebody else's body unless they specifically ask you to take it for them, right? However, what happens is if you take the sleeping pills, it slows down the body. So that when the, the baby gets swapped into Satoru's body, it's slowed down by the sleeping pills. So it takes it longer to like get in the tub and drown itself. Whereas if you don't, if you take, if you don't take them, it does it real fast. And then Satoru gets drowned in that 33 minute interval. That's the difference. It makes sense in, in hindsight. Once you go through it, it makes sense. But it doesn't make sense when you're in foresight. It's really cool, actually. I really like that. But we're going to do don't take them. And we're going to see if there's another choice to see if there's like an A and a B um, version of Satru drowned in the bathroom. Um, so we're going to skip forward. See if there's a choice or it hits it the bad ending. Allison to sort of close. Um, um, I'm going to hit apologize. Mayuzumi san. Uh, Mayuzumi san. What? I bet my head deeply. I'm sorry. Looks like I really made you angry. But please believe me. I'm not lying, and I'm not trying to make a fool of you either. Mayuzumi looked at me with suspicion, or suspicion in her eyes. Yukawa-san is being arrested. This is to go to Naka since Fuyukawa-san has apologized, why not go ahead and make up now? Yamogi tried to play the peacekeeper. Amazingly, just let out a snort of contempt and started walking away from me. You're gonna apologize, you shouldn't have just said those strange things in the first place. Instead of bothering me, you should be making dinner. Hop to it. Jeez, what a moron. She pointed at Yomoki as she vented her anger at him with those words. Right, okay. Um, okay, let's do Chuka Don. All three of us said it in perfect unison. An unusual, in Yano's decision, huh? Actually, I was just thinking how much I wanted to have some Chuka Don as well. I don't understand it myself, but I'm really in the mood for Chuka Don. <laughs> he nodded his head and muttered, mm, you're going to take out four servings of Chuka Don from the cardboard boxes. Okay, everyone get their bowls ready. We quickly took the bowls and spoons out of the cardboard boxes. But this was really kind of incredible. The fact that four of us all agreed on what to eat. It's as if at that moment we all had decided I want to eat some Chuka Don. That thought was a broadcast to everyone else. No, maybe we could think of it another way. From the very beginning, everyone's decision had already been determined. No, that's not exactly the idea either. I'm not the type to believe in fate. I don't believe in that kind of dream. I'm not that kind of a romantic. Maybe you could try thinking of it like this. Everyone's decisions were all made by some kind of unseen existence. 
Fourth wall break. Yeah, right. I'm such an idiot. There's no way something like that would happen. Blink, winkle. But that does sound like a bit romantic, doesn't it? So I tried to shake. It doesn't let me skip this for some reason. So I tried to shake off these strange ideas. I put the ingredients for the chukado and yobogi had handed me into my bowl. By the way, I suddenly brought warm chuka don to my list. They figured out like she tore it up somehow, and then they put it back together, and... Bathroom ground. Yep. Ah, oh, this one's red though, as opposed to blue. Oh, that's because you're playing as Kokoro. Okay. Yes. Sauter <laughs> murder in the bathroom in A. Okay, so I don't have, have, don't have B for that. Um, Allison disorderly clothes stolen at 96. So have seats between genders, 86. Okay. Um, I should be able to do this now, though. So load this collective symptoms. I hit take them. Just keep going. I'm going to do pick the nice sounding choice. I'm going to do apologize. I'm going to say rice porridge. Okayu. Manjoi chika. It's the same thing, it's just that the words replaced with rice porridge. But it won't let me skip because of that. But which food I pick doesn't matter. That's why I'm just going to go with it. I forgot why there's black screen here, okay. Yeah, it's Okay, now the peeing joke. Cloud of confusion in my head still hasn't cleared up. I was going to wash my face. I'm going to wash my face, stood up and opened the door the unit bath near the doorway of the room. As the cold water washed over my face again and again, my head started to clear up a bit, bit by bit. The unclear feeling of confusion disappeared as well. Moo. I looked up, I saw him in the mirror in front of me. Whom? Yukido Satoru. Because right now, he is me. Why is this new? How did things get like this? Something as far-fetched as alternating exchanges of personality. If this personality exchange keeps going, then what's going to happen to, to my life fr from, from now on? As I wiped my face with a towel, the Yukido Satoru in the mirror also wiped his face with a towel. 
Wait a second, so that means... I just realized something truly horrifying. The owner of the body I'm currently in, in other words, the personality of Yukido Satoru, is probably inside my body at the shelter cabin right now. So that means he has the freedom to do whatever he wants with my body. I suddenly shuddered all over at the thought of some man I've never met fooling around with my body. No. I groaned instinctively. I staggered out of the washroom. Feeling somewhat irritated, I placed paced back and forth in the room like a caged animal. But I still couldn't seem to calm myself down. That's when I noticed the note that had been left on the table. I grabbed it and held it tightly in my hand. Okay, I wonder why that was not skippable. That's interesting. So the time it took me to wash my face and read the note was about... It was about 10 minutes. Why is a wash face supposed to pee? There's a pin lying on the table. I turned the note over and wrote on the other side of it. The transfer happened at 1.07 p.m. Okay, and then, yes, I've checked the playlist again. Yes, save my system data. This may get trickier as more possibilities. Ah, discrepancies between the genders is still only at 93%. Interesting. Oh, that's weird. How do you get different versions of that? Like if I tick take this one I take them and fast forward through this is it different? They had to make a bunch of choices about peeing, right? We didn't get those choices. That's like we didn't... How would we not get those choices?
Okay, that's weird. Um. Okay, so. That's bizarre. Um, but I'll okay. go. When you think of snow, you think of rabbits, right? F uh, a, f a fool their natural predators. To fool their natural pred predators, they have the trait that allows them to make trails of fake footprints in the snow. When I was a kid, I remember my honest respect for that, th thinking I too want to be as intelligent as the rabbit. Rabbits are definitely all about the ears. But to hover about, about the ears is too ordinary, so I'll concentrate on making the face really detailed first. Without wasting any more time, I started to draw. Let's draw a round. Around. The pin had changed into a cup. It keeps going. Okay. As, and if it's going to be a snowman, the most important part is the eyebrows. Whatever anyone else may say, eyebrows. Only thick, big, thick eyebrows like pieces of seaweed can be called the proof of a real snowman. Without wasting any time, I started to draw. Okay, that's weird. I'll just kind of roll with that. Let's do keep quiet. I wanted to make my complaints known, but decided against it. To survive on this mountain in the dead of winter, perhaps it's necessary to live greedily like Miyazumi. Since we were really hungry, what we should have done is evenly divide up everything at meal times. Whatever, I couldn't do it. Because of the four people here, I've only gotten to experience heaven. Toast, bacon, and eggs, and tuna salad. The dishes were incomparable to such plain rice gruel. The difference between the warmth of the heated dining area and the cold here was like the difference between heaven and hell. My body itself wasn't full, but my spirit was satisfied enough. On the other hand, the other three were on the brink between life and death, having already been shut up in this small suffocating cabin for around ten hours' time. I, cu I couldn't possibly take food away from them. I couldn't even criticize Meizumi. With that, the meal's savages compar comparison to those at Sphia ended. I was kind of roll with that choice. Okay. Let's see. Pineapple. I guess I'll try the pineapple flavored one. Oh, how exotic. You need to place the hard candy firmly in my hand. Somehow it felt as if it were, I were, it were for a candy store. Thanks. I got the candy and tossed it into my mouth. It may have been a pineapple taste artificially produced using sweeteners, but it was very delicious. Hey, now I think about it, are you alright with pineapple flavored stuff, Kokoro? Yuni smiled while popping the melon candy into his mouth. What do you mean? I thought you might hate it. Why? Well, you said you hate the pineapple from sweet and sour pork. I like pineapple. The only time I don't like it is when it's served with sweet and sour pork. Anyway, it's unbelievable, isn't it? You're supposed to be eating pineapple, but it's warm. 
Moreover, it's covered with Chinese style sauce. It feels like being cheated. Like you, the feeling when you catch someone you believe in being unfaithful, red handed. Yep, it's exactly the same feeling. So, pineapple on pizza to Kokoro is kind of like being cheated on. We both rolled the candy around in our mouths and smiled. Hey, Kokoro. Want to get married? Okay, let's just roll that. Okay. Let's try clone. Yuni? こういうことを聞くのはすごく失礼かもしれないけれど。asking something like this might be extremely rude, but あなた以外に世界にもう一人ユニと遺伝子組成が完全に一致している存在がいると思う? Do you think that elsewhere in the in this world another person exists whose genetically comp genetic comp composition is perfectly identical to your own? I asked Yuni in a roundabout way. Yuni exists as two people. The simplest solution would be if he were a clone. If you were a clone, that would take care of the contradiction of witnessing him both at Sphia and here. However, in other words, my clone, or if I were a clone, maybe the real me is somewhere out there in the world. Yuni finished the, his sentence after a pause and asked me, I'm sorry if I upset you. No, it's not that I'm upset. But I think the possibility that I have a clone and the possibility that I am a clone are both probably null. First, in the first place, clones themselves only exist in numbers of 0. Point something percent range in today's society, right? The probability of being together on a snowy mountain with someone like that after an accident is probably infinitely close to zero, don't you think? That's true, isn't it? I'm sorry. Kokoro, well, Kokoro, haven't you apologized enough already? I said I really don't mind, okay? Okay, thanks. I'm sorry for asking such a weird question. Jeez, I've been telling you to stop. He places his hand on the ladder, ladder grinning like a Cheshire cat. Let's keep going. Even so, asking if I was a clone or not. Why are you curious about something like that? You're strange, Kokoron. An oddly pre precocious smile on his face, Yuni said those last few words and climbed up the ladder. There was a single reason I thought he had a clone. Because I had witnessed two Yunis. If he doesn't have a clone, who else is it possible to encounter the same person in two places? How else? Both the shelter cabin and Sphia. As Yuni's memory, okay, however, this deduction didn't provide any answers about the mysterious phenomenon seeing Yuni both places. Yuni said he wasn't a clone. Okay. I place twin and clone everywhere. Knife accident. Blackout. Okay. I'm going to check on Yuni, Utsumi noted, without turning and ran towards Otori's Yuni! room. Buzi! Yuni, are you okay? I came flying into Yuni's room. He was crouched over in the corner of the room with a blanket pulled over his head. It was like when we first met in this room. Face distorted in terror. Large teardrops swelling from his eyes. I'm scared, I'm scared, Kokoro. You're safe now. He may be remembering the plane crash. The sensation of falling with a sudden jerk was similar to the gravity loss on that airplane. 
Tokoro, don't leave me. It's alright, I'm here. I'll hold, hold your hand, okay? I gripped onto Yuni's palm firmly with my hand. Just like at that time in the crash. You aren't Kokoro. Crying, Yuni clung to me. I was so scared. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, it's okay now. Still crying, Yuni hugged me tight. He rubbed my small back against... Again, I rubbed his small back again. Yuni-kun was dead! Is Yuni-kun safe? It's anyways into the room, she was gently holding Hotori's shoulder. Hotori's face was blue, but it didn't seem as if she was injured. Somehow, he's alright. A somewhat relieved look had appeared on Sumi's face, but her expression was still stiff. Thank goodness. But we can't relax yet. Why? I guess because we're not certain that there won't be a tsunami. Tsunami? Tsunami? The idea of a tsunami and the sea during winter didn't connect immediately. I didn't realize that tsunami was a Japanese word until just now. <laughs> yes, on the Oko Okushiri earthquake, a lot of damage was caused by a tsunami. Asogi Island is in a similar geographical position. We can't let our guard down. I think this is repeated like text, it's just that there's a different background to it that makes it not skippable. Otori grabbed onto Utsumi's arm with anxiety in her face. We gently stroked her head. It's going to be fine, I'll protect you. Properly until the end. Well, that's ominous. Are we going to die? No, she just thinks that Hotori quote unquote is. Still, there's no way that'll happen, right? We'll definitely be fine. Feeling Yuni's hand shaking, I clasped it tightly once again. Isn't there a way to protect ourselves from a tsunami, like climbing up to higher ground? How about the clock tower, if we're there? We assume we shake her head from side to side. I don't know how to get up to the clock tower, and we still, we never figured that out. We also never figured out who pushed Satoru in Onomoto's body, as I'm thinking now, off the clock tower. Why, you don't know. Yes, Yukito-kun might know, but... However, Satoru's personality isn't here right now. They can only pray that there won't be a tsunami. It seems so. In slower cases, it can take it's okay. Let's go forward. They might have normally been tasteless, but perhaps due to my hunger, they tasted delicious to me. Interesting. The taste of sesame seeds flavored was well enough. I could even think of it as a high class pastry that way. The chamomile tea followed. The scent that reminded me of fruit tickled my nose. It's delicious. Camomile tea, I guess that's different because we chose not eating the hardtack. Okay. Check the clear list again. Okay, so discrepancies between gender were missing 7%, and has, that has to do with that whole peeing joke, which for some reason didn't replicate. I'll we'll get back to that at the end of this recording. Okay, breakfast good for you, 100. Was mutual understanding, 100. Cause and reason, 100. Trust and deception, 100. Alarm, 100. Taste of primordial sea, 100. Discord of group consciousness, 96. Yeah, that's where we are now. Okay. Continue. 
Yes, and just pick the other choice. You go in a snowstorm like this. Don't try to stop him. He finally said he was going to call for help. Don't blow our chance to be saved, okay? Maizumi puffed up her, out her chest as if it were her own achievement. Ah, Why did I ever say it? you may have fooled around too much in your past life? Okay, this one I'm gonna drop a save and I'm gonna pick the opposite one after I do this choice because it's a bad choice, but. Um, maybe you fooled around a bit too much in your past life. I was just kidding him, but it seemed the joke didn't go over too well. And I intended to live earnestly in this life to make up for that. Yamushika said as if saying, oh boy, and sat down in front of the stove. Okay, scars taste like something. なあ、冬川さん。助けなかったら読む。Okay. What's going on here? The place I, I glanced at any sign of people in them, but they may have been just hiding. What should I do? With the, the hand cut? Okay, yes, this is where she comes in and finds his arm has been cut. I did private room before, we're going to do the main entrance to make it different. I might be able to get out of there, but I hesitated. To get in the front entrance, I had to pass through the living area, and I had to go through the kitchen as well. It's possible that someone had been trying to kill me and was waiting along the way. If I got attacked midway, just think about that maybe it made my body tremble. I felt like I was about to collapse on my knees. What do I do? Do I go or do I stay here? I'm going. I didn't, if I don't go, I'll be killed. I have my trembling body and summoned my courage. If I was going, then I would just have to make a run for it now. I couldn't afford to take my time. In the dim light, I ran, holding my body as low as I could. I ran along the wall through the living area, or so I thought. All of a sudden, I felt as if the ground had disappeared from under my feet. <laughs> There's no floor. Now it's a step. There's a difference in the floor level between the living area and the kitchen. At that moment, I realized that I fell down the step. <laughs> Ouch. My entire body was racked with pain, bringing tears to my eyes. <laughs> I can't take this. Somebody save me. I endured the pain and stood up, confused. Surveying my surroundings with care, this time I made it to the front entrance in spite of my injured foot, which I was dragging behind me. The sturdy-looking automatic door was firmly shut. Even if I stood in front of it, it didn't respond in the slightest. The power was still out. The electricity had been cut off, and the automatic door was open. I'm begging you, open up. I pounded on the door, however, even if, if I did that, there was no way the door was going to open. What should I do? There's nowhere to run. Straightening my posture and drawing close to the door, I furtively looked back toward the living area. Blanketed in the dim light, neither the kitchen nor the living area held any sign of a human presence. I held my breath for a while. Nothing moved. I'm safe? Or else are they lying in wait somewhere? Keeping a sharp lookout, I slipped into Satoru's room. Closing the door, I locked it behind me. I should be safe now. Just as relief had set in, my fear from... Yep. Okay. So then it goes normal from there, right? Uh... 
I still haven't figured out why there's blood on Izumi's hands. Because no one got stabbed. Uh, except Satoru. Okay. I'm gonna do stuck climb up on the cardboard box. I put my phone in the cardboard box and peer into the switchboard. There is nothing particularly suspicious there. The switches were covered in dust, but there was only one with an imprint left by Yuni's thin finger. There were no signs that it had been touched by other people. Was the breaker tipped by the earthquake after all? The moment I tried to get down off the cardboard box, Dunk. My foot sank in the box. Uh, I, I, I who had lost my balance. Was thrown to the floor. My injured left arm was hit hard. Yeah, the pain made me see stars. A weird scream issued from my mouth. As if to strike the final blow, the cardboard boxes began to collapse and crash down on me. <laughs> when it was over, I, I was pinned underneath them. Are you okay? Uh, I'm not. Ow. Well, I'm gonna pause the encoding here because I'm gonna have to deal with the situation. No, maybe not. What's happening, if you're curious what's happening right now, my recording setup faces um, towards my, my driveway, which is kind of a longer driveway. And so, if someone goes down our driveway because they accidentally went the wrong way, I, like, see that they did that. And then I might want to go out there and tell them where you're trying to go and stuff. Uh, anyway, someone just kind of drove down my driveway and got, without knowing it was a driveway, accidentally going the wrong way. Okay. No, I'm not. Ow. As Yuni helped up, helped me out the pain, rendered me br br briefly unable to speak. Jeez, you're so clumsy. You're not a clone, right? I wonder if that was Uni here. Uni here will answer. No, I told you I'm not a clone. You just asked me that before, right? My heart jumped. I unintentionally began staring hardly at Uni's face. Try to get angry at Yomogi. Gripping the newspaper with my hand, I slammed it as hard as I could. What are you doing, Yukito kun? I'm. I'm. Fuyukawa Kokoro desu! Fuyukawa Kokoro. Eh? Kokan. Shitta no? That won't matter. Okay, let me go to title. 
Yes. Check the clear list. See if I missed something here. Okay, cause and reason 100, truth and deception 100, alarm 100, okay, pace of paranoia 100, square group 100, scars taste like paranoia 91. Interesting. Shadow of Falsehood 90. Oh, I haven't finished Shadow of Falsehood yet. Okay. Stars taste like paranoia. Let's go back to that save. If I just I didn't save there. Okay, let's do run to a private room. Interesting. Okay, so it's efficient there. Okay, I was going to keep going, but I do ignore Meizumi. There's no time to waste explaining. If I don't hurry, I won't catch up to you. Say something. Please let go of me. Shake my hands off a little forcefully. I'm in a hurry. Meizumi was astonished. Oh, you seemed at a loss for words. Turning for Meizumi, I put, my, put on her coat and went toward the door. Perhaps I should have explained, I thought, but it was impossible for me to put up with her selfishness any longer. If I don't follow you Yomogi quickly, look after Yuni. Saying this, I went outside without waiting for Meizumi's reply. Just to change it up. And do the opposite one. Let's go back. He's his expert, I'm merely an amateur. I should obey Yogogi and un who knows how terrifying a mountain can be. I dejectedly began to go back the way I came. Maybe was angry voice screaming upon me. Why'd you come back? I could be heard from the other side of the closed door. The door had been shut and locked. 
Yeah, but... Just go already. No, please let me in. No way. You gotta be kidding me. Just descend the mountain as you please. Have an accident and freeze to death. Mayuzumi seemed to be misunderstanding something. Uh, Mayuzumi-san? I tried calling out, but there was no answer. Jeez. No other options, I heard to sigh and once again set out after Yamogi. <laughs> wow, I guess you can't do that? We'll see. Here, hit stay silent. There's the CG. No matter you shrugged his shoulders and I stayed silent. Shouldering his backpack, he stood next to me, who was staring vacantly at the site. 27 people died here. Do you understand the meaning behind that? I buried my face in my knees. If I didn't, I'd scream. I used to have a son. But now, I am childless. I felt a loneliness and sorrow in Yamogi's voice. I can't stop thinking about it. Just what was the point of that entire incident? Is th if there is meaning to human life, there must be some sort of meaning to death as well. That's what I'd like to think. If life didn't have any meaning, with that, Yomogi closed his mouth. The sound of his teeth gritting reached my ears. Yomogi-san. Yomogi-san. I looked up at Yomogi, but he had already turned his back to me. Let's go. There's nothing left here. Spitting those words out, he began to walk off. Nothing left. Only death. Only that. The deaths of the 27 people I had gotten I had gotten on the plane with weighed heavily on me. Why had I survived? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't understand why I was apologizing. Even though I had held it back for so long, the moment I started apologizing in my heart, tears started to flow. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> wow, the tears wouldn't stop. Beside the place I was crouching, the powdery snow danced on the wind. It was as if a throng of souls had come to attend a funeral. The will to live and a decision. Our steps were heavy. Then the door at the cabin burst open and Meizumi came flying out. Anger was written all over her face. In anticipation of her shrill screams, I felt even more depressed. Following Meizumi, Yuni came out as well. Yamogi waves one of his big hands. We're back. What the hell do you think you're doing, old man? Here it comes. Bewilderment showed on Yamogi's face as her sudden sharp, uh, sharp, sudden sharp words. Hey, just what the hell? Meizumi drew closer to us with a truly terrifying forcefulness. What's with that you were back? Quit acting like a moron. She sternly glared at me. With too much force, I instinctively stepped back. You, you make me sick. What were you thinking? I just... Shut up. She prodded me in the chest, making me stagger. Enough with your little goody two-shoes act. Hey, stop it. When it seemed I was right on the verge of being struck again, Yogomi stopped me and zoomed. Let me go. Stop. She was in full Nelson. She was in a full Nelson, yet Meizumi still tries to grab at me. With the state she was in, all I could do was yield to her. I'm sorry. I apologize for not having properly explained. If everything could be solved with simple apologies, you wouldn't need the police. Settle down. Yamogi too had finally realized why Meizumi was so upset. Quit blaming Fuyukawa-san. That word. It still sounded like she was angry at me, but even so, Meizumi settled down at last. 
Yomogi explained that we'd seen, we'd seen, seen, been to the crash site. Let's say so from the beginning. Do you know what you're talking about? I thought you were going to be a mistake. I thought you were going to be a mistake. I thought you were going to be a mistake. Do you understand how I felt? I thought you left, you'd left for good. Try putting yourself in my shoes, you bastard. Okay. I'm sorry. Maisumi clicked her tongue and turned away. Kokoron? A feeble voice. When I looked over, Yuni was standing frozen there with tears dripping from his eyes. It's not just Meizumi. I upset Yuni too. I deeply regretted my own carelessness. I couldn't find the words to say anything. Ora, hey, don't cry. While gently stroking Yuni's head, Yomogi spoke with forced I brought you a souvenir. This is yours, right? You were playing with it on the airplane. Nomoyi reached into his back backpack and brought out the worn-out teddy bear, which he handed to Yuni. Taking hold of it, the light returned to Yuni's face. Ah, uh, uh, my TV. Yeah, one of the ears came off, though, and it's pretty beat up. He hugged the teddy bear with all his might. With the back of his hand, he scrubbed away the tears. And then he smiled like an angel. Arigato! Yatta! Arigato! Hooray! I was relieved to see him that way. Even though it's not on the surface, not just on the surface, I'm glad he regained his vitality. <laughs> Wonder what the consequences that will propagate. Okay, uh... So this is gonna be like a bad ending thing. I'll do this one. I promptly fended off the chair with my hand. Doll pain runs to my left hand. I unintentionally ended up using my dominant arm. Forgetting that Satoru's left arm was injured. Uh, luckily it looks like the painkillers are kicking in. It wasn't very painful, but I injured Satoru's body yet again. Hearing that madness gro groaning, I returned to my senses. Otori cried out, gritting her teeth. Okay. Of course, Otori didn't know what was going on, right? Like, it was the baby who was going to throw the chair, and she just kind of swapped in a position ready to throw a chair. Uh, do the opposite choice. Before I transfer again, I better look at it. Sorry, I'm a little busy right now. Why don't we have Mayazumi show you her palm? I didn't think of it. I was thinking of thor thoroughly re-examining the case of Inabushi Keiko. Okay. Eh? Yuni opened openly pouted. Not her. Why? I don't like that old lady very much. Who's the old lady? Abruptly, Meizumi appeared, opening the door with a bang. Looks like we were overheard. She was wearing a coat. Kind of think of it. I had been thinking. I didn't see her in here. Did she go outside? Sharp ears. This time it's your fault. As a bitterly smile, I rebuked Yumi. But Kokoro will keep me comfortable. If that's the case, I'll stay with you later. That's okay, right? Yoni nodded reluctantly. Well, since there's nothing to it, let's give some attention to Tobolin. I told you, don't call me Tobolin. Even if Yuni gets showered with harsh words, he really doesn't seem to be to learning his lesson. With light steps, he came to meet Meizumi halfway. Come on, come on, I'll read your palm. No thanks. The Meizumi answered coldly, Yuni didn't try to withdraw. Well, it'd be alright. I wonder if this will turn into a fight. Feeling a little suspense, I watched for, for the outcome. My predictions come true splendidly. 
If it's true, then I'll change for it, but I'll give you one for free. How bold. Hey, show me your palm. Show me. Show me. Jeez, you're so noisy. Meizumi was clearly annoyed. I better put a stop to this. But suddenly, she unexpectedly held out her hand to Yuni herself. Just once. Yeah. I won't accept any bad results. Then there's no point in fortune telling. Shut up and get started. It looks like I was just over anxious. The boy named Yuni can suddenly lighten up even this atmosphere, which had felt like one wrong move would turn it savage. A natural mood maker. And because of that, his existence is very, very precious to us. Relieved, I, I took the Inabushi file Yogomi have retrieved and sat down on the wooden chair. Once again, I opened the file and looked over, looked and looked over many times. Now then, and though I sat down and tried to read, <laughs> your luck with money is incredibly bad. You don't have any savings, right? Shut up. Unintentionally, I was paying attention to Yuni's fortune-telling. I bitterly smiled at that aspect of myself. I'm a woman too, and in the end, I love fortune-telling. I was at a woman thing. Give me a better fortune. Let's see. What, what? Before long, Lin will meet with an old acquaintance again. Really? Meizumi got excited, bracing herself. She drew nearer to you. So then, who? Could it be Satoru? Satoru? I was startled. The name Meizumi blurted out. She definitely said Satoru just now. Which reminds me, Meizumi got really worked up over me calling myself Yukito Satoru. And before, while looking at an old photograph of herself, she also muttered the name Satoru. If the man Meizumi called Satoru was the Yukito Satoru I know, those two, what in the world was their relation? Oh. Stay silent and listen carefully. Considering what her personality is like, Meizumi surely wouldn't answer even if I asked her to, to her face. I shut up and listen carefully. If I wait, maybe I'll be able to hear it for, from her my, from her herself. Meizumi is still pressing <laughs> So who is it? I don't know that much. Oh, he does know that much. She gripped the shoulders of bewildered Yuni and shook him so hard his teeth rattled. You don't know, you say. So do something so you'll be able to know. That's absurd. Maybe she finally realized that she was asking for something impossible because maybe Simi cleared her throat and he let go of Yuni. Well then, do you at least know what my relationship with this old acquaintance was? I listened to it in as carefully as I could. I need to f I kind of feel I've eavesdropping on others' privacy, but I decided to take this chance. Perhaps if I can understand the relationship between Meizumi and Satoru, I'll find a hint to help solve the mystery of the transfer phenomena I'm experiencing. Well, a close person. How close? Very close, I think. What do you mean by very? This is vexing. I can't help it. It's like that. There are other ways you can put it, right? For example, like a lover or a best friend. I just don't know. Only... That person thinks of Lin as someone very important to them, I think. I too heard the sound of Meizumi catching her breath. So. And, I see, was her only answer. Well, my fortune telling is amazing, right? Not at all. The Meizumi who answered coldly had already back to her usual self. Shushu, shu. go away now. She waved her hand as if shooing an animal and wrapped herself up in the blankets. 
And like that, she sank into silence. In the end, I wasn't able to understand the relationship between Meizumi and Satoru. I sighed and returned to the work of rereading the file. Okay. I'm gonna skip, right? Okay, we're gonna, hit, we're gonna save this. Meizumi is still pressing me. So, who is it? I don't know that much. She gripped her shoulders in bewildered uni and shook him so hard his teeth rattled. You don't know what you say. Then do something so you'll be able to know. Did I do this right? Yeah, okay. I clicked on my courage and called out to Mayazumi. Mayazumi san. Uh, Mayazumi san? Mayazumi turned around, her face gloomy. What? Mayazumi san to Satoru te. Do you kanke nan deska? What is Mayazumi san's relation to Satoru? Huh? Huh? Mayazumi's expression quickly turned severe. <laughs> Yoku you wa. You sure like, do like to talk? Mata hippata karata wa ke? You want me to hit you again? Yet, so no. Now that's. Kore wa ke ste. Kyomi hoi to ka janakte. This is by no means just out of mere curiosity. Perhaps if I can understand the relationship between Meizumi and Satoru, I'll find a hint to help solve the mystery of the transfer phenomenon I'm experiencing. Satoru wa ima. Sugoku komatte rin desu. Right now, Satoru is very troubled. Dakara. So. Satoru wa ima. Sugoku komatte rin desu. Right now, Satoru is very troubled. You sound surprisingly intimate. You too, what are you to Satoru? It was a question I hadn't anticipated. I was flustered. Uh, that, uh, what, I wonder. Idiotic. Meizumi shrugged her shoulders and turned her back to me. Waving you anyway, she again rolled herself up in the blankets. I quit, I quit. Fortune telling isn't serious stuff anyway. The way she is now, I don't think she'll answer no matter how I ask her. I sighed and returned to the work of rereading the file. Why is this not skippable? Okay. Okay, load. Stay silent is what I'm going to go with this through. Don't review it, just keep going. Well, I guess I don't really need to. Now then. And then... Title... Yes. I think this is where the recording's gonna end, but I'm gonna look at the clear list before I end it, right? Um... So I'm good up until the whole potty scene, and then I have a problem with not rep with replication. Actually, I thought it said I was going to do that at the end of the recording, so I guess I will. Um, then Scar states like paranoia, I have a problem. Um, so. Oh yeah, I have all kinds of problems in here. Um, interesting. Oh. 
try to see if I can solve the, um, the potty thing here. So I'm going to do continue, I'm going to do a load, and I'm going to do a replication of, um, go from here. I try to replicate exactly what I did the first time I played this. Let's see if I can remember what the exact choices were. So I think investigate the doors is what I chose. And then I said go down the stairs, I believe. And then I said I can handle them. I said, ask directly. Then I said, tell him I'm for you, uh, Kawakokuro. Then I said, talk to the man. I said, where are we? Then I said, what uni said bought with me. Please are the right choices. I think I said talk to your mogi. I said try eating the hardtack. I said, try smiling. Okay. Um... Which one did I do here? I think it was check the door. I don't recall it. Uh, 
don't know if that one matters. I don't recall what I did on that one. And then I, you have to do take them, otherwise you get a bad ending, and then you can't do the follow-up. And then presser harder is what I originally did. And I put said stew. Yeah, interesting. Skipped right through with no choices. I dropped a save just so that like it like saves because if I save it doesn't do anything. Um, okay. So, um, so first issue is there is dialogue about you know peeing as a boy that I got the first time I went through that I can't get to replicate. And during that, there's choices that you can make, like go back in or just pee yourself, stuff like that, right? Um, and because of that, I can't get to those choices for some reason. I don't know what's was different the first time I went than this time. So because I can't get those choices, it might have something to do with like you, you say, yes, go off of like saying you're an angel at the beginning or something. I don't know. Uh, I have to go, go some, through some crazy replication. Maybe I'll do that like off recording. I'll like do choices and then if I trigger it, that scene again, I'll then start recording if I trigger it. But I can't trigger it again. So that's leaving the 7% undone here in discrepancies, discrepancies between gender. And then I have something like scar Scars Taste Like Paranoia, I have something missing there. And then Shadow of Falsehood, I have something missing. And Desire to Change, I have something missing. Um, and then this is where I am now. So, yeah, we're, we're going to fight a ways until we get to a missing scene here. They get some missing scenes that you can get that they haven't gotten um, in the in the in when you get in here deeper. So, so I guess like my top priority right now is figure out how to trigger the peeing joke, and then uh, then I can work on. Um, the, uh, what's it? Scars and, par yeah. Shadow of Falsehood, no, it's Scar, uh, Scars Taste Like Paranoia. That's the next, the next priority to try to work my way through this. Um, so, yeah, um, Overall, 82%. Choice is 60%. Um. Okay. Three variations. Four variations. And three. Good. And three. 
variations. One, two. Okay. One and two. One. One. One and two. One. One. One, two, and three. One and two. One, two, okay, got it. One, one, one. I forgot how to toggle over. What does that do? Um, selects. I can't. Uh, num lock. Oh, okay, my num lock was not on. Okay. Um, One, 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 two, three, and four. Got all of them. One, one, and two. One. Is the this is not in the list? That seems like a glitch of some kind. But okay, continuing. Both of them. I like that picture. Oh, that's it for now.